Hi, I'm Ryan Szymanski, creator for Battleship New Jersey Museum and Memorial. Today we're going to talk a little bit about damage control plotting. So, we are in Damage Control Central here on Battleship New Jersey, which is at the forward end of Broadway near Central Station. And uh, we've got all of our booklets of general plans here. On a normal sized ship, you might uh, have your full booklet of general plans on one of these folding boards. On an Iowa class battleship, not so. There, there's uh, over 80 plates that make up our damage control plates. So we've got more stored down here that we can access. So if the plates that we need are not up, we can get the right ones. Uh, so this one, our subdivision of the lower decks is what we're gonna start with. So damage control is reported here to damage control central. And then from damage control central, the response is sent out and progress is tracked uh, so that we know when we're secure from this. So there's a lot of communication around this compartment and one of the key jobs is to plot with a grease pencil on the uh, damage control plates here, which are laminated so you can write on them um, and then wipe it off afterwards. So anything that happens is being plotted. So first of all, let's say that we have a fire in the SD storeroom here on the second platform deck. So storerooms, pretty common place to have fires. You got a bunch of potentially combustible materials there. So first thing we do to plot it, is we're gonna draw a line coming out of there. We've drawn this, there's a fire in there. Uh, supplies, storage, hard material. So it's probably a class A fire. Obviously, whoever reports this would report what type it is. It's a bunch of clothes that's burning. All right, so uh, solids are class A fires. Uh, Bravos, class B fires. That would be more of your liquids, your fuels, things like that. Uh, class C fires, Charlie, that, that would be electrical in origin. Obviously, each of these three uh, ignition sources, you're going to try and fight a different way. Go in with water against the class A fire. That's going to be great. That, that'll put out the burning pile of clothes or rags or cardboard, whatever the case is. Uh, you go in against an electrical fire with water, and then you got bigger problems. You go against an oil fire with water, and all of a sudden the water level goes up, the oil is now floating on that water, and it runs right over the knee knocker into the next space, and the fire is now spread. So it's very important to ascertain what type of fire it is. So um, next up, it is by my watch 11.14, so this is the time that the fire has been reported. The next thing to do, we have dispatched a fire party there. That is going to be uh, six people, right? So these six people are on OBAs, oxygen breathing apparatuses, that have uh, about 45 minutes of reliable air in the canister. So we're going to write down that they just went in there. It is now 11.15, really fast response time. So uh, plus 10 minutes, that's going to be 11.25, plus 20 will be 11.35, 11.45. Around 11.55, we want to start uh, getting them out of there or having them change air canisters or sending in another team. Now, in addition to uh, sending a team in there to fight the fire, we also want to establish fire boundaries so that that fire doesn't spread. So we're going to set up our primary boundaries right here on the bulkheads. Uh, so this is frame 28 and that's uh, frame 36. Uh, so there's a primary boundary now, and we'd also want to set a secondary boundary at the next bulkheads after that. So we have now set, okay, so we've got our after secondary boundary, that's frame 43. Then we've got our after primary boundary, that's frame 36. Forward primary is 28 and forward secondary is 23. Uh, but now also we've now sent two more people down there to man those boundaries. So 
Got two more guys there, and uh, it is now 11.17. So this becomes 11.27, 11.37, 11.47, and 11.57. We've got to remember to swap those guys out too. Now we've got our boundary set up. We've got our people in there. This fire is being fought. We can circle that and say that it is being fought now. Awesome. Uh, and I would write the time for that. Uh, so we are fighting this fire now. We've got the time that we're fighting it. And we want to know what agent we're fighting it with. Since it's a class A fire, we're just fighting it with the fire main. So write FM there to indicate that that is just salt water that we're putting on there from the regular fire and flushing main. So uh, a little bit of time has progressed and uh, it wasn't a particularly big fire and they've managed to knock it out. Fire is secured. Uh, we've got 11.19 by my watch. So now we've got the time it was reported, the time it was combated, the time it was secured. Awesome. Fire is done. We did it. Except We've got a fire that we just dumped a bunch of water on. Now we've got white smoke in this space. We've got white smoke and we've also got flooding from the fire water in that space. Uh, probably a couple inches of water in there. Because uh, remember, this is still watertight space. We've got the boundaries secured. So now that's stuck in there. So not only do we have to de-smoke the compartment, we've got to de-water it now. Flooding. Uh, and our, our Fire boundaries are going to stay the same in this case. It's all contained in the same space, so we're going to keep that set. These two guys are still there. Uh, we've already got our damage control party down there. Uh, so they're already combating these. So let's say we started, that was 1119, that it's now reported that these are an issue um, by 1120. Uh, next up, just like we wrote our agent here, we we're using the fire main. For this, we're going to use the red devil blowers. Blowers, which are used for de-smoking a space. And for the flooding, uh, it's only three inches. I'll just write that down there to note how much was in there. Uh, and, and really, we can collect that with uh, swabs and buckets. So basically, just mop up that water. If it had been a bigger fire, it took longer to fight. Uh, it could have caused significantly more flooding and we might actually have to go down there with the ductors or the uh, gas pumps to fight the flooding. But here, um, it's just the, the mop and bucket. So, just right mop up there. And then, surely, inevitably, these get secured. Say. That would never be this quick. The ship this size, you gotta dispatch people from long distances to get what they need. But, but we've got repair lockers all over the place, uh, as you guys have seen in our past videos. Um, so that there are guys all over the place with the equipment they need to handle these situations. So uh, at this point, everything is secure. The space has been dewatered, desmoked, and uh, defired, most importantly. Um, we didn't have to pull any of our guys out. None of them ran out of air in the time. This is secured by 1122, so they, they were still within 10 minutes of their air supply uh, being used, so they still had 30 or more minutes. So everything's good there. The next stage, we're all done. Now I've got to save this plate. Remember I said it's just a grease pencil, you can wipe it off? Well, this wasn't a drill, this was an actual thing. So now there's gonna be an investigation into it. And uh, this is now a legal document that says that this is the best document that we have that shows when things were performed, what was done, what actions were taken, who was there, um, if anybody was hurt, like all of this stuff would be reported. And so now this is saved until uh, the investigation and they'll take pictures of it or copy it or take it and give us another one. And uh, that's that, that's how you report your damage control on the ship and how you uh, effectively fight it. Uh, if you are interested in damage control or any of these other processes and procedures and terminology, there's a link in the description below to a playlist 
that shows you uh, us finding all the damage control lockers. New Jersey has more than she's supposed to. Uh, has us talking about some of the equipment that's commonly used. There's one where I actually put on one of the OBAs and uh, see how that works. It's one of my favorites. Um, there are some where we talk about what the different classifications of fires are and what the different water type conditions are and other things that supplement this. So uh, be sure to check that out if you haven't seen it already. So what are some other damage control topics you'd like us to cover in the future? Let us know in the comments section down below. Did you use a similar process on your ship? Let us know down below. As far as I know, this hasn't changed much throughout the ship's career. Battleship New Jersey receives operating support from the New Jersey Department of State, also from a number of other businesses and private individuals like yourselves. We really appreciate your support, and there's a link in the description below if you'd like to continue donating to support the museum. You can also support us by liking, sharing, and subscribing so more people find out about the museum and our channel. Thanks for watching.